And then let's have a quick look at what UKIP are promising. Uh, how could we forget that? A rapid referendum on Britain's membership of the EU. UKIP would also like to introduce an immigration cap of around 50,000 a year for skilled workers who would come into the UK under a new points-based system like the one they've got in Australia. A pledge on the NHS as well from UKIP. They'd spend an extra three billion a year for the NHS in England. A lot of health numbers flying around, aren't there? And with UKIP, you would pay no tax at all if you earned the minimum wage. And UKIP's leader, Nigel Farage, joins us now from Kent. Good morning, uh, Mr Farage. Uh, as things stand this weekend, the more people vote for UKIP, the more likely we are to get a Labour government in hawk to the SNP. Are you happy being Ed Miliband's back door to Downing Street? I don't know where you get your numbers from. I mean, the last uh, by-election was in Rochester. Mark Reckless won it uh, with 42% of the vote. Uh, and there was a 14% swing away from the Conservatives from 2010. Therefore, by an exact ratio of 2 to 1, the people that put Mark Reckless back into Rochester and Strood were not Conservative voters. And I think the one thing uh, that the polls are really missing here is that a large lump of the UKIP vote are people who didn't vote for anybody in the last election. Now, there are seats in the Midlands and seats in the North uh, where we are the challengers to the Labour Party. And in those seats, if you vote Conservative, you will get a Labour government. And yet, the policy that matters most to you is a referendum on Europe. That's, that, that's what gets you out of bed in the morning. I mean, you could still be responsible for a Labour SNP government which is never going to give you this referendum. I mean, it's a ludicrous position to be in. Well, my plea, uh, you know, from now until polling day, is to Labour voters. You know, having uh, taken part in those two TV debates, having seen the dynamics between Ed Miliband and Nicola Sturgeon, um, it's pretty clear to me in that relationship who would wear the trousers. And so I'm saying to old Labour, if you're patriotic... If you want a referendum, if you think immigration needs to be controlled, do not vote for Ed Miliband, vote for UKIP. And that way, UKIP can take a significant number of seats off the Labour Party, which will stop them and the SNP getting over the required number of seats to form a coalition. But the, the only possible chance of you getting your referendum in the next five years is if there's some kind of Tory government. And UKIP could, UKIP could well stop that from happening. Well, I mean, it's a bonkers position to be in. Well, 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 the only chance of getting a referendum, and certainly the only chance of getting a full free and fair referendum, is for there to be a good number of UKIP MPs in the House of Commons. Look, Mr Cameron in 2008 gave this country a cast-iron guarantee that if he became Prime Minister, there'd be a referendum on the Lisbon Treaty he didn't deliver. Uh, he then spent the whole of 2011 and 2012 saying that a referendum would not be in the national interest. His own position is clear. He wants Britain to remain a member of the EU pretty much at all costs. And, and frankly, if Mr Cameron had a majority, it's not going to happen, but if Mr Cameron had a majority on his own, I fear not a referendum uh, but a complete stitch-up. And the point is this. If you're a Conservative voter that feels, as I feel, that Britain should be outside of the EU, that we should control our borders and have an Australian-style point system, then vote UKIP and make sure there are enough UKIP MPs in Westminster to hold Mr Cameron's feet to the fire so that we get a full, free and fair referendum. I'm sticking with the referendum because that is your keynote policy and indeed a lot of your economic policy follows from a referendum yeah. and Britain coming out too. But you've told us many times uh, in years gone by that Labour would end up going into this election supporting a referendum. You got that wrong, didn't you? Yes, I got that wrong. I'm very, very surprised. I, I underestimated... Uh, the extent to which Ed Miliband has fallen in love with the corporate big companies um, and the whole EU form of government. I thought, given that a very significant percentage of Labour voters feel very strongly about a referendum and are very worried about the fact that open-door immigration has brought down their living standards, changed their communities, made it more difficult to get their kids into primary schools, I thought, in the face of all of that, that Miliband would promise a referendum. He hasn't done so, but 
Uh, OK, I was wrong, but it gives us a terrific opportunity. It gives UKIP a terrific opportunity to appeal to Eurosceptic Labour voters who would never vote Conservative even if you paid them. If I ask you who you'd rather see as Prime Minister, Mr Cameron or Mr Miliband, you won't answer me, correct? Well, what I would say to you is uh, that rather than voting for a change of management, uh, I would like this election to be about a change of government. But sadly, uh, so many of the big decisions that affect this country, affect our economy, the ways in which our business run, our energy, our fishing, our farming, sadly, so many of, the, of, of, of those things won't change one iota, regardless of whether Mr Cameron or Mr Miliband goes into number 10. But your supporters are clearer than you, aren't they? I mean, almost 70% of UKIP councillors have told this programme that they would prefer Mr Cameron. Only 6% would prefer Mr Miliband. 45% of your vote are Tory defectors. Only 11% are Labour defectors. Your, your people want to vote UKIP, but if they had a choice, they would prefer Mr Cameron to Mr Miliband. Well... If Mr Cameron was in Downing Street, uh, many of our supporters would prefer that right now because Mr Miliband hasn't promised a referendum. But the point is, if Mr Cameron is left on his own to conduct that referendum, I will bet you that it will not be a full and free and fair referendum. I will bet you that the four million EU citizens living in Britain will be allowed to vote in that referendum. And the only way we get a proper referendum is if UKIP is a strong presence in that parliament. In northern seats where the Tories have no chance of uh, winning against Labour, you want Tories to vote for UKIP to stop Labour. By the same token, in straight Labour Tory marginals in the south, where you have no yeah. chance, shouldn't you be telling your supporters to vote Tory to stop Labour? You know, even if I did, they wouldn't listen to me, because the remarkable thing, and there's some quite big polling that Lord Ashcroft has done on this, when voters leave the Conservative Party, indeed the Labour Party too, and switch their allegiance to UKIP, they don't want to go back. And, and, and when you ask people, you know, if there wasn't a UKIP candidate in your constituency, how would you vote? Uh, they actually, 50% of them say, they wouldn't vote for anybody. Uh, and the rest splits evenly down the middle between Conservative and Labour. And indeed, that work's been done here in Kent. Uh, you seem now to be flatlining in the polls. You've said yourself you know better than where you were in August of last year. You're either flatlining or in some, you're in decline. Why is there no momentum behind your campaign? Uh, well, actually, what's happening is, on a daily basis, uh, many elements of the press uh, talk down UKIP's chances. It, we, we've had several weeks of this. You know, UKIP's collapsing, it's disappearing, the sand is slipping through their fingers. And actually, uh, quite the reverse of that is happening, uh, and we're seeing uh, not just the UKIP vote holding rock solid, uh, but some evidence of it beginning to firm. Now, I can't predict, you know, where the national debate's going to go over the course of the next 18 days. Uh, but if we do get back onto discussing the big issue, uh, which clearly the number one issue is immigration and the effects of immigration on our public services, our communities, uh, the level of income for average earners, if we get back onto that territory, uh, then the UKIP vote will rise from here. Is it true that you're now targeting only 10 seats uh, that you have a hope of winning? No. How many no, are you? I, How many do you There is you one particular newspaper that seems to write uh, every day stories. <laughs> well, I hope to win as many as possible. Uh, you know, I've said, Give us I've a said from the start of this uh, that I'm not going to make ridiculous predictions, but I've consistently, I've consistently said all the way through we are going to win more than a handful of seats. We're going to get a very respectable share of the national vote. We're going to come second in a number of constituencies that will really genuinely surprise people. Um, and it will be for UKIP a genuine coming of age as a parliamentary party. Is it still your position that if you fail to make it to the Commons on May the 7th, you will resign as UKIP leader? Yes. Yes, of course it is. I mean, you know, I said that and it's become a huge story. But actually, you know, most of the party leaders at the moment will be gone by the autumn. Uh, there aren't many winners uh, in this general election game. You know, Mr Cameron may not be there. Mr Milliman may not be there. Mr Clegg might not even win his seat. Um, look, I have put my neck on the line. 
for this South Thanet constituency. Uh, I believe that was a purely a statement of fact, the right thing to do. Yes, it stands. But do you know what? As every day goes by, I'm now feeling more confident about winning this seat. Uh, is it your view that the migrant vote could swing this election? Uh, that depends where you are. Uh, I mean, certainly, uh, certainly in, in, in areas like London, uh, that has been very much to Labour's advantage. Uh, but, you know, it's a funny thing. I think you'll be very surprised uh, how many of the black and ethnic minorities go out and vote UKIP on May the 7th because they understand, uh, probably more than anybody else in this country, the need to have sensible, controlled immigration, to have integration within society. And one of the ways in which we reach out to that community is, of course, we're the only party in British politics that is pro the Commonwealth, thinks we should have a trade deal with the Commonwealth and better relations with all of them. Uh, Mr Farage, there's been a terrible tragedy uh, off the Italian island of Lampedusa this morning of migrants trying to get into Europe from Libya, I think it is. And it looks yeah. like hundreds and hundreds have uh, drowned. Isn't that the sort of tragedy that, uh, and the problem of this uh, attempt of people to get in to Europe from the southern shores of the Mediterranean, doesn't that require a European-wide response? Isn't this yeah. what you need, a European Union, a European response, and not a narrow nationalist, uh, we're all right, I'm all right, Jack, response to? Well, actually, it was the European response that caused this problem in the first place. The fanaticism of Sarkozy and Cameron to bomb Libya, and what they've done is to completely destabilise Libya, uh, to turn it into a country with much savagery, to turn it into a place where, for Christians, the situation is now virtually impossible. And we ought to be honest and say we have directly caused this problem. I have said... The, the, there, no, were no, there were no we migrants Libya coming across the Mediterranean before I have Libya. Said, uh, that there were no migrants coming across from Libya in these quantities before ah. we bombed the country, got rid of Gaddafi, however bad he may have been, and destabilised the whole situation. Of that, I have no doubt. But I'm the one person that has said that I do think, especially for Christians in that part of the world, they now have almost nowhere to go. And I, mean, I, you know, I have not got a problem with us offering refugee status to some Christians from those countries. All right. Nigel Farage, thank you for joining us.